Imagine, this is the second album by John Lennon, and this is my first ever classic album review. I've done a couple of classic movie reviews, if you guys want to go check them out. But I'm excited to get into this one. This one came out in 1971, just over 50 years ago now. And you guys all know who John Lennon is. I don't have to introduce him. He was obviously a member of this band called The Beatles. And like I said, this was his second studio album. This was following his debut studio album as a solo artist, Plastic Ono Band, which is a extremely raw and an extremely intense listening experience, but also extremely good, I think. And I personally prefer this to Imagine. And for those who aren't aware, this is kind of a debate amongst John Lennon slash Beatle fans of like, do you prefer Plastic Ono Band or Imagine? It kind of reminds me of how people will debate over whether the Blue Album or Pinkerton by Weezer is better. And I, I find both debates similar for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first two albums for both artists. Well, actually, that's kind of the only reason, um, but I think in this case, uh, Imagine would be more like Weezer's first album, the Blue Album, and Plastic Ono Band would be more like Pinkerton, because it's a little more rough around the edges musically, so to speak. But yeah, putting that aside, putting my thoughts on Plastic Ono Band aside, I'm just here to talk about this specific album, Imagine. This album was recorded in Ascot Sound Studios, which was a studio that John and Yoko built the year before. And if I'm not correct, this is actually on the same grounds that his home was at the time. So the album was recorded like at his home pretty much. I would actually recommend for people who have heard this album to check out the documentary called John and Yoko Above Us Only Sky. It kind of gives some insights into the making of this album, a little behind the scenes footage, uh, some really cool stuff in that one. I recommend checking that out, but I recommend listening to the album first before you watch it. And with this album, John took a much more relaxed and softer approach to this than he did with Plastic Ono Bands during the recording process. And a lot of the songs do come out as a little bit more easy going. To start off the album, we have the track Imagine, which everyone and their grandma knows at this point. And if you didn't know it before COVID, you know it now from that one clip with all the celebrities singing the song, whatever that was. And to put it simply, I, like a lot of other people, think that this is a great song. I think it's very pretty. I love the arrangement. I love the strings in this song. And throughout this entire album, the strings that were performed by the Flux Fiddlers, which were members of the New York Philharmonic, uh, they sound beautiful. And I, you might hear me coming back to that, to the way that the strings sound just because they sound so great throughout this entire album. And then we have the lyrics to this song, which have basically made it this big anthem at this point with John pretty much asking us to imagine this world with all these different things. Imagine a world with no religion, a world with everyone living in peace, a world with no possessions, no greed, no hunger, all these different things. And I think that given this album's release date, it being sort of at the tail end of the Vietnam War, I think that did kind of I mean, just from my perspective, I, you know, obviously wasn't around then, but I think given its release date and given the time that it came out at, I think did sort of give it more attention than it would have at some other time, and especially after the Vietnam War. And then with the second track, Crippled Inside, we get a song that sounds completely different from Imagine. I mean, it's a very folky, country sounding, kind of sounds like Jim Croce to me. And it's an extremely fun song and extremely upbeat and bouncy. And I like how the lyrics to this song are a pretty big contrast to the music. How John is pretty much saying that no matter what you do, no matter what you try to hide about yourself, what you try to cover up, you have problems, you, you are crippled inside. And he's basically saying that on the surface level, on the outside of yourself, you can make yourself appear to be very well put together and just free of stress or whatever, but deep down inside, that's not something you can really hide and you can't really cover that up. And then with the next track, Jealous Sky, we get what I think is one of John's best vocal performances on this entire album, maybe just even that he ever did. And this is once again just a very pretty and relaxing song with this 
very simple piano part leading it and the strings once again sound absolutely gorgeous on this one and we even get this whistling interlude after the second time the chorus is sung which is a surprisingly very nice touch to it and then with the next two tracks we have it's so hard and i don't want to be a soldier mama and these are the quote-unquote duds of the album i wouldn't say that they're necessarily bad but they definitely hold back the album from, in my opinion, being as good as it could have been. With It's So Hard, which is kind of just a very slow moving song with a very typical rockabilly like chord progression. And I mean, the song is okay, but it just feels very weird in the record. It feels kind of out of place at this point. And then we have I Don't Want to Be a Soldier Mama, which sounds like it wasn't even recorded in a studio it sounds like it was recorded in this big room like a freaking cafeteria or whatever i mean it almost even sounds like a live recording and i don't know why it sounds like that i don't know what they were going for it's just very strange and very random in this album and you know it'd be one thing if i did actually like this song but i don't really think it's that good i don't find it to be that interesting, personally. These two tracks do kind of just halt the flow of the album. However, the last five tracks, side two of the album, does not disappoint, to say the least. And I almost want to say that they actually get better, like, with each different song. Almost. I think what stops me from saying that is maybe that I don't like How quite as much as How Do You Sleep. That comes after How Do You Sleep. So I think that one kind of holds it from me saying that, but... Either way, I think this last half of the album is fantastic. We have the song Give Me Some Truth, which I would say is the most plastic Ono Ben-ish sounding song. And like the title, John is pretty much just saying that he wants to know the truth. He doesn't want, he's tired of people covering up what's real and sugarcoating everything. He really does not hold back at all. I really like After the Bridge, he says, I'm sick to death of hearing things from uptight, short-sighted, narrow-minded hypocrites. And the outro to this song is very effective with John pretty much just screaming at, at this point, asking for the truth, that's all he wants is the truth. And it's easily one of the angriest moments on the record. We then get to the track, Oh My Love, which kind of like crippled inside after Imagine This is a much different song. It's much more laid back. This song was also written by John and Yoko. It's the only song on the album to have a collaborative writing credit on it. And while I do like this song a lot, and I do find it to be a very pretty one, I would probably point to the lyrics as being a little bit stereotypical. But the instrumental in this one, I think, does kind of carry that load that the lyrics couldn't quite lift. I really like the electric piano part played by Nicky Hopkins. The guitar played by George Harrison, who, if I'm not mistaken, actually plays guitar throughout this entire record. Musically, it's a very pretty piece, and like I said, does certainly make up for the lyrics being somewhat lacking, I think. And then we get the next track, How Do You Sleep, which is essentially not the first ever diss track. I believe actually the first ever diss track would have come from Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney's album Ram with the song Too Many People. That was your first mistake. You took your lucky break and broke it in two. Mm. That was directed at John. We were writing songs at each other. Yes. It's like weaponizing songs. And this song was John's response. This was his kind of counter diss to Paul. So in other words, the Beatles created the diss track. So when you hear a song like this. Now making all the dope. white man just or this. He'll have to f him in my flannel. I'll give him my sandals because he knows long as I'm shady, he's gonna have to live in my shadow. You can thank the Beatles for pretty much uh, laying the groundwork for the, the, the diss track as we know it. But yeah, this is pretty much a diss against Paul McCartney. And I mean, man, some of these lines are pretty brutal. Let me read some of these to you guys. Those freaks was right when they said you was dead. The one mistake you made was in your head. The only thing you done was yesterday, and since you're gone, you're just another day. Another day, by the way, is uh, Paul McCartney sounds what's what he's referring to. Yeah, it's a brutal track. Uh, musically, I really love this one as well. It's very kind of bluesy influence. And once again, the strings on this one really come through very well. And I love the slide guitar work that George provides here. The following track, Howl, is once again another one that is vastly different from the track that precedes it. And I like the message that John comes across with this song, 
which is pretty much that life is hard and it can be difficult to really know if you're making the right decisions sometimes and it can just be confusing. We all struggle with life sometimes and that's pretty much the topic that John is meditating with on this one. And I think that the music that backs these thoughts up is pretty good as well, mainly driven by this piano part and the drums. The kick drum plays a big role in this one. Then we have the last track, Oh Yoko. And you know, obviously there's a good amount of people who don't like Yoko Ono that much, but I feel like even those people will really like this song a lot because it is just so ridiculously catchy and infectious that I actually first heard this song in the Wes Anderson film Rushmore, a great movie by the way. It is just such a cute and honestly adorable song, just kind of a simple love song him professing his love for Yoko, but it's just very sweet and very playful. I've always loved Imagine ever since I first listened to it. It's got some really great messages about life and the hardships that can come from life and the great things that we can take from it and experience from it. Like I said, it does have those two songs in there that definitely don't measure up to the rest of the album quality wise. And now that I think about it, How Do You Sleep does sort of stand out since it is pretty much just a diss track, but you know what? I don't mind it because it is just such a great song, so I'm okay with it. If it weren't for those two tracks on this album, I would honestly probably give this an A+. I mean, I really do think it is that great, and it has held up that well in my opinion. But even with those, this is still a fantastic album, and I'm going to give Imagine an A. I would love to hear what you guys think about this uh, in the comments if you have heard it. Um, or if you have heard this and Plastic Ono Band, which one do you prefer? If you do have a preference, let me know. And I'm pretty sure that's all I got. Uh, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace out.